Today we're gonna to be talking about some awesome tips and tricks that you can do with your glide cam. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Tomorrow's Filmmakers. My name is Justice McCraney, and now that you know how to balance your glide cam, how to operate your glide cam, and even the different types of shots that you can get with your glide cam, now I would like to share with you some practical tips and tricks that I have learned over the years that will not only make your footage smoother, but will also help you on the day of shooting. So without further delay, let's jump right into it. Number one, shoot in slow motion. If I am on a stabilizer, I am almost always shooting in 60 frames per second. And even if later I decide not to slow it down, you want to be able to have the ability to slow it down if needed rather than not be able to. So I'm always shooting in slow motion. And there's actually a few reasons why you would do this. And number one is that slowing down your footage actually makes it look smoother. For example, here is a shot that I slowed down to 40% of the original speed and it actually looks pretty good. Well, in reality, this is the original shot in full speed. You can definitely see a lot of the swaying and the jitteriness and it just doesn't look that good. But when you slow a shot down, you don't really notice the swaying that can sometimes happen with a glide cam. So if you have some shaky glide cam footage or maybe there's an obvious sway, slow it down and it will take that movement away. And not only does it help with movement, it just looks better whenever you're on a glide cam and everything is in slow motion. It just looks so much more cinematic. So I shoot everything in 60 frames per second whenever I am on a glide cam. Number two, warp stabilizer. Now, if you're not familiar with warp stabilizer, it's basically an effect in After Effects that you can put on your footage that digitally stabilizes your footage. Because some of the best glide cam operators out there in the business right now have admitted that sometimes they add a little bit of warp stabilizer on it. Because even if your stabilizer is completely balanced and you're walking perfectly, sometimes things just happen and there's a little bit of sway or a little bit of jitteriness or a sharp movement and there's nothing you can do about it. Even though you did everything perfect on the day of shooting, you look at your footage and, oh man, there's a little bit of movement in it. So there's nothing wrong with adding a little bit of digital stabilization and taking that completely out. Now, since warp stabilizer is completely digital, if you add too much of it, you can really start to see this warping banding kind of effect and it looks awful and very obvious. So when using it, you want to use as little of it as possible to make the shot look smoother. You don't wanna add a bunch to it, you just wanna add enough to where it takes out that swaying or that jitteriness, but doesn't do it too much or else it'll be very obvious. So shoot in slow motion and if necessary, use warp stabilizer. Tip number three is zooming in. Another effect that I have found very cool is to add a digital zoom to some of your glide cam shots. And this basically means that you keyframe your image to scale up a little bit during the duration of your shot. Now again, you don't wanna do this too much, you just wanna make it very subtle to where there's a slight push in to the image. Now I have found this doesn't really work if you're walking towards something or moving away from something, but it works very well if you're doing a side to side glide cam shot. So if you're moving from one side to another side and you're focusing on an object to add a little bit of zoom to the shot where you're focusing on that object. And then all of a sudden it looks like it's a dolly shot where there's like six people manning this camera, one's moving it and one's zooming in and one's zooming out. And it looks so much more cinematic and boost the production quality of your image. So if you're focusing on a subject, simply take your footage and keyframe it to scale up maybe 10 to 15% over the course of the shot, and be sure to zoom into the subject that you are focusing on, and this will give you a really cool panning and zooming effect. You don't have to do this with every single shot, but I have found that it really boosts the production quality and makes it look so much better. And tip number four is to move in the same direction. Now this is something that you don't usually think about whenever you're filming on set or doing some run and gun shooting, but if you don't do this, it's going to look very strange in the edit and it's gonna take your audience out of the moment. For example, if you are moving left to right for a few shots, they blend together nicely because they're all moving in the same direction and it just flows really well. But if you just throw a random shot moving the opposite direction, it's like, whoa, what was that? You basically smacked a brick wall and turned around and walked the other way. 
So whenever you're filming, be sure to stay consistent with the moves from left to right, left to right. It's the same way with a slider. It's the same way with anything, really. Now, do you always have to move from one direction to another? No, you can switch things up if you want to and move the other direction. But in the editing, make sure that those clips are not right next to each other. Have some sort of break in between them. Like these two shots, left to right, left to right, looks great. Then we have a shot of pushing forward, looks great. And then we have a shot from right to left. So we've taken that shot in the middle of moving forward and broken up the two shots from left to right and right to left. And now it flows very well. If we were to take out that middle shot and just had left to right and then right to left, it would seem very sudden and the audience would be like, whoa, and it just wouldn't flow very well and it would look really amateur and really bad. So stay consistent with which direction you are moving and if you do move the opposite direction, do not put those clips together. Have something in between them to break up the pace. And tip number five is faster movements are always smoother. And what I mean by that is, I have had many times where I've tried to make a very slow crawl with a glide cam, where the glide cam is barely moving whatsoever and you are slowly walking forward. And I have found whenever you are moving that slow, it's very obvious to notice any sort of shaking or moving because the camera is barely moving forward at all. But if you walk just a little bit faster, those movements are not nearly as noticeable. So if I'm gonna be doing a very, very slow crawl, I will usually shoot it in slow motion, walk a little bit faster, and then slow it down to the speed that I'd like. Because again, if you walk super, super slowly and barely moving at all, any movement whatsoever is going to be very noticeable. But if you walk just a little bit faster and slow it down, all of that movement is taken away. So if you're gonna be moving very slowly, I would suggest walking a little bit faster than you normally would and then slowing it down. And tip number six, zooming in with your lens. We don't wanna have every single shot as a completely wide angle lens where it's just looking at everything because that will get very monotonous and look exactly the same. We wanna be able to get close-ups of people on a glide cam or medium close-ups or zooming in and zooming out. And the only way we can do that is to either change our lens or change our focal length. And as a lot of you guys know, if you change focal lengths on a lens, it will throw the glide cam off balance. But there is one trick with doing that that I have learned over the years that is so amazing and I use it all the time. And that is to practice how many turns it takes on your glide cam to offset the zoom. So if I have my 24 to 70 millimeter on my camera and the glide cam is balanced perfectly at 24 millimeters, whenever I zoom into 70, it makes it front heavy and it leans forward. Well, I have practiced with this so much that I have learned that around 13 turns will make it balanced perfectly at 70 millimeters. So if I take the glide cam and turn the back about 13 times, it is now balanced at 70 millimeters. So whenever I'm filming weddings and whenever I'm run and gun shooting and I wanna zoom into something and get a different glide cam shot, I don't wanna have to take another lens on it and then have to balance the whole thing and do the drop test. All I have to do, zoom into 70, twist the glide cam 13 times, and then boom, I'm ready to go perfectly balanced at 70 millimeters. So if you're gonna go on a shoot, practice how many turns it takes to balance it properly whenever you zoom in to certain focal distances. If you're gonna be zooming from 24 to 70, how many turns does it take whenever you zoom into 70 to get it perfectly balanced? And then all you have to do is remember that whenever you're on set. And tip number seven, never walk sideways. So if you're tracking a subject or moving from left to right with your stabilizer, what you don't wanna do is face your subject and then walk sideways. This is going to make your glide cam very jerky, very jittery, and not be smooth at all. What you want to do is always walk in a straight line. So if you're going to be walking from left to right, walk forward and turn your camera towards your subject. You always want to be walking in a forward direction because this will give the most absorption in your legs and be able to get the smoothest shot possible. So never try to walk sideways. You're gonna trip over your feet. It's not gonna be smooth. Walk forward and turn your camera in the direction that you want it to go, and that will give you the best looking shots. And last but not least, my final tip, and it's actually probably one of the most important, and that is to practice. 
I've been using film equipment for so long and I have been using stabilizers for years and I always go as far as to say that stabilizers are one of the most difficult things to learn because they are one of the pieces of film equipment that actually require hours and hours of practice to get it to look right. Because you buy a slider, you stick your camera on the slider, it looks great, a dolly, a tripod, even a gimbal. I mean, they all look really good right out of the package. But this piece of film equipment literally takes practice to be able to get it to look right. So if you're trying all these different shots and it's just not looking good and it just always has sway in it or all these different types of things, you have to keep practicing if you want it to look good. So don't stop practicing with this. Take all of these tips that I've shared with you guys, go out on the field and try these things over and over again until you get it perfect and until you are confident in your stabilizer. So hope this has really helped you guys out and that you've enjoyed it and learned a lot. Definitely grab your stabilizer, go practice with it. And if you want to know more about filmmaking and videos like this, check out tomorrowsfilmmakers.com. We have over 40 hours of content and new episodes coming out every single week that you do not want to miss. Also, be sure to check out our completely free one hour webinar in the notes below on my proven method to become a professional videographer. It is a jam packed one hour webinar that you do not want to miss. So again, I hope that you guys have learned a lot. Keep filming and God bless.